Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I am a disabled neurodivergent woman. I have autism, ADHD, a rare memory disorder called SDAM, and global aphantasia, which means I don't experience any of the senses in my mind. I just realized I left my fidget toy over there, so I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> I do do some videos without my fidgets, but I'm just really feeling like I need one. Okay, so this is Autism Acceptance Month, so I'm kind of really focusing uh, my content on autism, but I do have videos on all of my neurodivergencies on this channel, so make sure you check out my playlist. I always like point like here, like, oh, during editing, I'm going to put a screenshot of my, <laughs> my playlist, but I never do that. Okay. I'm having a hard time starting because I have an idea for a video, um, but it's really a hard subject to talk about so I don't <laughs> try to figure out how to dive in so like normal I have an idea um, for my videos and I don't like to pre-script them and as an autistic person um, a lot of times we pre-script to help us think but I actually like to use this channel as a way to process my thoughts so it's almost like the first scripting in a way <laughs> just a very public way of doing it because you know the anytime you are going to script something in your head you have to do it the first time sometime right i'm just choosing to do it out loud on camera and potentially post it to the entire internet to see if they so choose to click on my thumbnail so what this video i kind of want to talk about is uh the relationship a little bit about growing up undiagnosed autistic and the relationship I have with my mom and my sister. So obviously I grew up undiagnosed autistic and autistic ADHD and my sister was actually diagnosed ADHD. That's one of the reasons why I never thought I could have ADHD because her presentation was so different than mine. After my diagnosis, my mom has kind of come to the uh, realization that she is also probably autistic. So an undiagnosed autistic mom in the 80s and 90s raising two undiagnosed, partially diagnosed with ADHD, my sister, children. <laughs> so in a single mom at that. So keep that in mind. Um, she did an amazing job raising us. She did the best with the limited tools that she had and I think that I had a really good childhood. Now if you see my uh, videos about my memory disorder, I don't really remember my childhood. Um, I have episodes I don't have episodic memory. I do have semantic memory. So I do know some things about my childhood. Like I know how many houses I lived in. I know the names of the schools I went to. I know that, you know, I was heavily involved in Girl Scouts. I know my mom loved me. I know I loved my mom, still do, still does. Um, so I have semantic knowledge. I just don't have episodic. I just don't remember my childhood, but I still have a lot of facts about my childhood. And I'm not going to go into any further detail about that, but there are videos that go into a little bit more explanation of how my memory works on my channel. Okay. So the funny thing is that now I am an autistic mom raising two autistic children also who we did not know were autistic until they were 14. And let me tell you, that's a video for a whole other day. Autistic people raising autistic people. But anyway, sorry, this video is not easy. I, my mom and I were always really close. And as an, undi I, as an undiagnosed autistic woman, a girl, I made up rules to survive. It was part of my autistic mask. And one of them was to always be a good girl. After my parents divorce, 
I knew that things weren't easy for my mom. And so I didn't want to do anything that would make it harder for her. So I was always a good girl. Try to be perfect and never make mistakes was another part of my mask. And always put other people's comfort ahead of your own. These were things that were basically what I call my programming. Anything that I interacted with or did ran through these filters before I made decisions and choices. And because society taught me that my instincts were weird and wrong, I would always turn to my mom to look to see if I was making good choices. And this is a good thing. Like children, you know, they need a moral guidance and compass until they can figure out their own. The problem is I never learned how to rely on my own instincts or my own decision processing. My mom and I've talked and she said that, you know, of course she was undiagnosed growing up and nobody taught her things on how to fit in. So when she was raising us, she purposely was teaching us how to mask without knowing any of this technology or terminology, right? Like she just knew if you do these things, people will not treat you right or make fun of you. So don't do these things, do these things. And again, that's what I'm saying. Like she was using learning from the hardships she had growing up undiagnosed. So trying to make my sister and my life easier by basically, you know, doing ABA, um, applied behavioral analysis without even knowing that's what it was, right? So when I would fidget, she would put her hand on me, don't fidget, like, don't do that. It's, again, because I don't have memories, I don't, I can't draw on specifics, instances in my brain of like things that happened. But I just know growing up, my natural instincts were very much squashed. And I learned very early on to not make waves, just fly under the radar. Because that was my mom's biggest coping mechanism when she was a kid. Just fly under the radar, never make waves. But my personality is the kind of personality that I want to be loud and boisterous and out there. I think my mom got made fun of a lot or teased a lot. And so her coping mechanism was just to be quiet and not let anybody know what she was thinking or needing or anything like that. And then that's kind of what she subconsciously passed on to me. My mom is an extremely, extremely private person. And my sister is also a very private person. So I grew up in a household with two very private people. At one point, my mom in my childhood, my mom was a nursemaid. And so we lived with this lady who was bedridden for about five years of my childhood. And she also was an extremely private person. So I grew up learning, never ask anybody questions because you need to respect their privacy. Like I learned that if you ask people questions, then you're invading their privacy. And as an autistic person, his communication style is to relate information with stories about yourself to show empathy this led me down to a path where people thought I was very narcissistic and self-centered because I would never ask my friends questions because I didn't want to invade their privacy. I thought when they felt comfortable with something, they would share it with me. I would share a relatable stories saying, hey, I'm comfortable with sharing this with you. Maybe you could share something 
back that same level. That's what I was thinking, but it never came across that way because people just thought I liked talking about myself. And that was never my intent. And I never, ever, ever understood why people saw and thought that I was self-centered when I love learning and talking about other people. Like I love deep conversations and philosophy and like the back and forth. But um, due to my communication style of being autistic and then growing up in a household of very private people, I just never learned how to uh, show people that I was interested in learning more about them. This video is really hard to make because I don't talk about my mom and my sister very often on social media because I chose to be on social media, not them, and I don't want to invade their privacy. So this comes to the next part. Because of that, no, I'm skipping ahead. Okay, back up. So fast forward, like let's the childhood, blah, blah, blah. So I'm growing up and I was always very, very close with my mom. I was included her in everything that I wanted to do. I always looked at her for input on decision making. I never made a decision without running it past her. We were really, really close best friends. And this became, I don't want to say a problem, but like it, it was a problem because I never learned how to think or do things for myself. My mom says I called her every single day on my honeymoon. I don't remember doing that, but I believe it because that's, I pretty much did. I like, after I moved out, I called my mom every day, sometimes twice a day. Um, and she, and I don't, I, I'm a mom, I get it. Like, I would have, I would love it if my kids were like that when they're older. But she never fostered an independence in me she never saw this as hey maybe like we need to be close but maybe you should be like trying to learn how to make decisions on your own and I'm not blaming her like I understand completely where she's coming from But as I was growing older, as I had my own kids and their needs were becoming more overwhelming and my mom wasn't understanding their needs. And for the first time, I was starting to feel like my mom's advice wasn't the best advice for my kids. And so I needed to start parenting on my own with my husband without my mom's input because my kids mental health was at stake and I also don't talk about my kids very often on my channel just because again I want to respect their privacy but I do talk about them sometimes when I feel like it's appropriate <laughs> just want to say thank you for watching this if you're still here I know I'm talking very slow today because I'm really processing so during this time, I was actually headed towards autistic burnout. Again, not diagnosed. I was pushing myself. I was losing myself in my special interest. I was doing perfection to the mask. At this point, I, had, I was exercising a lot every day. I was... Um, really focused on bullet journaling, which is just kind of an artistic outlet, outlet for myself. I was homeschooling my kids. I was throwing myself into trying to make friends and being everything I could for those people, like throwing way much energy into this friendship. And I was leaning towards autistic burnout, but I was, there's a big, also deep dissatisfaction I was like, I, I felt like I was still search, like I was doing so much and still searching for more. Like what was the thing that was going to make me happy? And at this point, my mom had, okay, because of my memory disorder, I don't remember all of the wins of things that happened, but 
I was reaching a burnout. I was feeling like I just didn't have it. Like I was giving everything I had to everybody in my life and I was running on fumes. At this point, my mom had broken some ribs and back, found out later that she got diagnosed with osteoporosis. And so she was needing even more support from me. I was trying to give support. We were butting heads because we weren't communicating very well. The support that I could give at that time wasn't enough for what she needed or I wasn't doing the things that would be the best support for her. You know, it was a lot of miscommunication. And we were starting to talk about how continuing homeschooling was probably going to be too much for me and not what my kids our kids were going to need moving forward. So we were starting to talk about looking at public school. So I was getting my kids ready to for that transition. And then I was looking at, oh my gosh, if I'm not a homeschool mom, who am I? And at that point I decided I wanted to start a YouTube channel. And it was like, for some people it's not a big deal. They just start filming and they start a YouTube channel. But for my mom, who's so private, I didn't think that she would encourage me to do a YouTube channel, but I really wanted to. And so I decided I was going to start making YouTube channel videos. And this was on, at the time I called it Dit Dot and it was a cooking channel. It's now the Neurospicy Mama. And I didn't ask her for input on the name of the channel. I didn't ask her if I should do it. I didn't ask my mom's advice for anything. I just started it. And it, it really hurt her feelings. And I didn't mean for it to hurt her feelings. I just knew deep down I needed to do something that was my own without my mom's input. Because I was turning 40 that year I just turned 40 and I felt this like really deep down like who am I separate from my mom at 40 years old I still felt like I was just an extension of my mom and I needed that separation and it's a separation that a lot of people go through in their early teens, mid teens, even early twenties. But I didn't at that time. A lot of times autistic people have different timelines in life and I still needed my mom during that time. But then when I needed to have time to separate from my mom, at that point, our relationship had become something that was so entwined. I did not know how to find myself outside of my mom. And oh my gosh, my loving supportive husband who loves my mom, but also just, you know, didn't want to get involved in between our relationship. And I don't blame him one bit. I mean, cause it was almost like me and my mom and then my husband. And he's like, I'm just here when you need me. And you know, that's not cool. And my mom didn't want it to be that way. She didn't want it that way. She just, this isn't any ill intent. It's just how things played out. So she was really hurt when I started my YouTube channel. And at that point, I started to not call her every day. I started to just like try to figure out problems with, with my kids, with just me and my husband. I started to try to think of like, what do I want out of life without my mom? And then of course, she's going through this whole back thing. And I feel really bad that I couldn't be there for her. But I was also going through such a huge emotional, my own emotional meltdown, burnout. And I didn't even have the words for it at the time. Like I couldn't even explain to my mom what was going on with me because I'd always, always been that perfect child who never needed help, who always made other people comfortable at their own expense. And so it was the first time in my life where I was like, I can't be there for you. And I don't know how to communicate that with you because I've never had language to say, I'm the one drowning here too. And I need help. Cause I've never, I never done that before in my entire life. It just always, always, 
pulled through, pushed through, and made things work. So then a couple of years after they started that YouTube channel, so last October is when my last September, it's when my kids got diagnosed with autism and ADHD and one with OCD. And then I got diagnosed autism, ADHD a month later. And there's more videos on the details of that diagnostic journey. But, um, so then after getting that diagnosis, and my mom reading and learning more about it too, because that's the other thing, because she was undiagnosed autistic, one of the common traits of an autistic person is to deep dive into your research and go down rabbit holes and learning new information. And that is something that my mom is like core personality trait, right? So she learned more about um, autism. And then that's when she was like, oh my God, I think I'm autistic too. Now she hasn't followed up with a formal diagnosis, but my sister and I both are like, yeah, um, it totally tracks mom. You are definitely autistic ADHD. Also after my diagnosis, I, as the start of this channel, because it was just about a month after I started this channel is when I started to realize that I might be autistic. So as I started vlogging on this channel, Instagram and TikTok, my diagnosis journey. And the reason why I decided to do that is a little bit of two things. One, I'd already been doing a dit dot again, rebranded to the neuro spicy mama after my diagnosis. Um, and so I, I would, at this point I'd been comfortable with being on camera and there still just isn't a ton, a ton of information on late diagnosed autistic women. When I was doing my research, I did come across some accounts of people who got diagnosed in their late teens or their twenties, but I wasn't coming across that many accounts of women being diagnosed in like their forties, like I was. And so even though at like the very first couple of videos, I'm like one's titled, am I autistic? Like I didn't even know. And I figured that other people probably were starting to wonder this themselves and might relate. And so I just wanted to go ahead and put it out there. And if it turned out that I wasn't autistic, then I could share that too and explain why and then what was next and all of that. Um, hint though, <laughs> neurotypical people don't usually question whether or not they're autistic. If it's something you're questioning, then you are probably autistic or neurodivergent of some way. That's a side note, something I've just learned since going through this process. Anyway, so anyone who's followed me along has seen that this has been a literally life-changing diagnosis. I've always been autistic, ADHD, but I didn't know it. So I was highly, highly masked, which means that I made choices and decisions and did patterns of behavior that went against who I would have been if I had been an unmasked woman. I would have delved into my fidgeting instead of tried to hold myself very still. I would have learned not to force eye contact. I would have learned to not put on this face, like on my early dit dot videos, like, I am so cheerful and it is all fake, but I didn't know it because I thought this is how you should talk to the camera because you have to be super energetic. That is the mask and it takes so much effort to maintain. And neurotypical people in studies, they have shown that neurotypical people can sense when someone's autistic. They may not know the word for it, but they like that person is uncanny and weird and I don't want to be around them because the, the mask isn't real, it's mimicry. It's mimicking who you think you are supposed to be to fit into society. Masking is so not helpful. My mom didn't know that growing up. Like this is something that she's currently struggling with. She's like, I thought I was teaching you how to do and fit in. And 
I don't know the answer to that because in the 90s, if I had been diagnosed, I probably would have gotten put in ABA, which is not, we now know, is harmful. <laughs> she was doing what she thought best, and I don't begrudge her for that. Society wasn't and still isn't set up for us autistic people. The only what if is, what if I had been diagnosed earlier and society was accepting of autistic people? That, that That's the best I, what if, but that what if is just like, not ever, ever was not even a possibility. Hmm, we're not going down that lane. Okay, so last thing I want to say, and thank you, this is going to be a little bit longer of a video, but I just, I feel like it's an important one, and it's a big part of my story. Um, so recently, my mom and I had gone out to dinner or lunch, and see, it had to be literal. And she asked me why I hadn't mentioned her, talk about her often in my social media content. And there is a trending topic on TikTok right now for people who are in their 30s, 40s, um, specifically a lot of, I think, in their 30s, doing no contact with family members. And my mom is big on TikTok. She loves, um, she loves consuming TikToks. I, I actually love that platform too, but it's my brain went to go on a tangent. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to just feel short. So I have PDA profile of autism. Um, this video on that pathological demand avoidance. And, um, especially, especially since my diagnosis and it's been through childhood too, but my mom will trigger my PDA. Like she used to recommend books to me and I would not want to read that book no matter what. Could not read it because my mom recommended it. Felt like a demand. Could not do it. But especially since my diagnosis, it's been the PDA with, towards my mom has been extremely strong. Not to her fault. It's just, again, repression and processing all of this pent up um, trauma. Not for my mom. I'm My mom, <laughs> trauma can happen whether it's intentional or not sometimes the trauma was societal base my mom was doing the best she knew it's still my childhood was traumatizing from society being undiagnosed autistic society as a whole traumatized me okay so my mom found tiktok and she was trying to tell me to get on it so I wouldn't get on it. Like, nope, mm -mm, not going to do that because my mom wanted me to. Anyway, I finally did get on TikTok and yes, mom was right. TikTok is amazing. It's so perfect for ADHD, autistic brains who learn, love to learn random factoids and just that quick dopamine rush for ADD, I mean, ADD, for ADHD people. So on TikTok, especially, it's where I've seen it the most is this no contact thing. So my mom, of course, has come across it. So when we were at lunch the other day, she asked me, are you trying to do no contact with me? Because like I said, I've been not calling my mom every day like I used to. I have not been including her in decisions. I have not been, I've been trying, I've tried to communicate some of this to her, but the problem is I'm still figuring out like, and so when I tried to tell her that day, I am processing and I have to process a separate from you in this case because I have to learn who I am separate from you. I have to do this and I want to keep you informed, but I'm not asking for your input. And that's the thing, like my mom being autistic also. We like to help, we like to inform, we like to, oh, I know an answer and want to share it. And, and that's, oh. she literally cannot help but say the thing that's on her mind. And I, growing up, learned to turn that off when I needed to not listen to it or not. But right now, I can't, I can't do that anymore. It's like, I, I can't hear your words right now, mom, because I need to not know your opinion um and I know that's really hard for her but I have I'm 43 now I have to be my own person <sighs> so she asked me at this lunch about the no contact and I hope I reassured her that that is absolutely not my goal I do 
think that no contact is appropriate for some families is not appropriate or wanted in this situation. And I told her, and she's like, we never talk about me on social media. It's like you've erased me. And I literally looked at her with such confusion. And I'm like, mom, you are literally the most private person I've ever met in my life. And the only reason why I never really talk about you on social media is because I am respecting your privacy. She's like, well, I feel like you don't want me in your video. So mom, here you go. You are in my video. And guys, my mom is so amazing. Like she has been my biggest cheerleader, my biggest supporter my whole life. Like I, there's so much love there for my mom. I want my mom in my life. I want my mom in my kids' lives. I'm just going through something. And that's why I, so it's not no contact. It's I need space so that we can have a strong, beautiful relationship that we forge together in the future. And I know I haven't been the best at communicating with her during this time, but it wasn't because of a lack of not wanting to. It was a lack of, I literally did not have the language and I'm still working on it. I'm not perfect, but I'm learning more about myself so that I can now communicate. Like. I could not have done this video two or three months ago because I hadn't figured out all the stuff that I'm now being able to share. And I am sharing it to the internet because I know I'm not alone in this. I know that getting an autistic ADHD diagnosis is so life changing for the person who it happened to and the family members and the friends around them because I have changed so much in the last couple of months and people looking at me from the outside are like, who is this person that I thought I used to know? Because we are taking off the mask and we are learning for ourselves the first time in our lives. What are the things we want to do and, and think and feel without society or other people telling us? And I relied on society, but I relied on my mom's opinions. Like I was joking with her. I thought I didn't like ginger, the food of ginger, the flavor of ginger, because my mom didn't like ginger. Like I went years saying that I didn't like ginger. And it wasn't because I'd ever tasted it. It was because my mom had an opinion about ginger so I just assumed that, oh, I shouldn't like ginger either. Like, I mean, I'm going to say it, our relationship, my codependency on my mom was not at a healthy level. And at the same time, the other thing being true, I'm not blaming her or upset about, uh, upset with her about it. She literally did the best she could with the tools and the knowledge that she had as a single mom in the 80s and the 90s. And she did a remarkable job. She did things that pulled away from her family. My grandparents are amazing people too. But again, every generation is learning more and more how to take care of our mental health. Like, our ancestors were so shut down and screwed up. Like, I don't even know how they survived. But my mom did things that went against her parents' wishes and desires while still maintaining a relationship with them. But it was against things that they would, like she got divorced where, you know, my parents, my grandparents' generation was very much less likely to get divorced, right? But she, my mom knew that divorce was the thing that she needed to do for our family's health. And now I'm doing the things that I need to do for my kids. And my mom is an amazing Nana, but we still all are forging new Pass a new relationship. It's been a turning point 
This diagnosis, like I said, has been life-changing for this reason and so many other reasons too. And I'm sharing this because I think other people need to see that this is potentially part of the process and that communicating a communication is going to be the best route forward. It probably would have been easier to just shut my mom out when I realized that, holy cow, I've never made a decision on my own without thinking, what would my mom say or do about this situation? And when it was like, when I come to the realization, how much I depended on my mom and my mom didn't know this about me. Like she wasn't trying to control me. She thought we just had an amazing open relationship, but no contact isn't what I wanted or needed. I need my mama. <laughs> I need her in my life. And I want her in my life. And I'm glad she's been able to see that and give me the space that I need to figure myself out, even when I couldn't communicate that. Oh, okay, I'm gonna stop there. Thank you guys so much for watching this. It wasn't an easy video to bake, but I think it's an important one. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye.